see it as well. Okay, so the first one, um, most papers start off by atoms and groups in a very, very similar way. So the first thing is, give me a definition. What is meant by a term isotopes? Nice definition. Obviously, straight away, is going to be atoms of the same element, so they have the same atomic number, but a different number of neutrons is key for that. So same number of protons, different number of neutrons. Isotopes of carbon have the same chemical properties. Why? Remember, chemical properties are just about electrons. What can we say about the number of electrons in these two different types, in these two isotopes? Number of electrons are going to be the same. So, same number of electrons um, in the outer shell. The carbon-12 isotope is used as a standard measurement of relative mass. Define the term relative isotopic mass. So, for relative isotopic mass, is the mass of an isotope compared to 1 12th the mass of carbon-12. Remember, that will always be a whole number. Right. We then get into some bonding and structure. Graphite. Table below with some properties of graphite. So it's telling me about its conductivity, its hardness, and its melting point. First of all, describe the bonding and structure in graphite. Whenever a question comes up like this, you must state the type of bonding and structure. Graphite has a giant covalent structure. So for one mark, you've got a giant covalent structure. The next thing is it wants to explain each of those properties below. Well, okay, let's have a look. So electric, electrical is a good conductor. That's because I've got mobile electrons between the layers. So those electrons can move. So that's our uh, conductivity. It's soft. The layers, what type of attraction are between the layers? What type of force? Van der Waals force between the layers. So the layers can easily slide over each other because there are weak Van der Waals forces between the layers. And then finally, melting point is very high because you've got strong covalent bonds in the layers that are very that take a lot of energy to break so key things it's a five marker giant covalent layers good conductor because i've got mobile electrons high melting point because i've got strong covalent bonds that have to be broken and it's soft because i've got weak van der Waals forces between the layers. Okay. Right, then they tell me a bit more about graphite being discovered in the Lake District. They thought it was lead. Uh, a student decided to investigate the number of carbon atoms in pencil lead. Uh, he found out the mass of pencil lead was 0.321 grams. Calculate the amount of moles of carbon atoms in the student's pencil lead. Okay, so key thing, it's told me the number of grams I've got, so it's going to be 0.321 divided by what? Yep, divided by the molar mass, or the rest of the time mass, but carbon, so it's mass over molar mass, and hopefully that gives you 0.268 moles. Using Avogadro's constant, remember that's always on your data sheets, calculate the number of carbon atoms in there. Okay, so you found the number of moles, it's dead easy to convert that into atoms, it's just going to be 0.268 times by Avogadro's constant, uh, which if you look it up on your uh, data sheet, is going to be uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And if you do that, you should get 1.61 times 10 to the 22 atoms. Most common mistake there is people can't put Avogadro's constant in their calculator. Right, so question two. Chemists have developed models uh, for bonding and structure. 
Ammonia is covalent. What is meant by a covalent bond? It's a shared pair of electrons. That should be boom, straight out. No problemos at all. Uh, right, uh, draw the dotty cross diagram for ammonia. Show the outer electrons. I mean, dead easy. You know that nitrogen has got five electrons. So you've got your lone pair there, like so. Then you put your hydrogen in, and that is ammonia. Name the shape of the ammonia molecule. Um, explain the of the cross diagram and why ammonia has this shape and a bond angle of 173. The shape is, of course, pyramidal. So we've got the shape. What's going to be my bond angle? Oh, the bond angle they tell me is going to be 173. For the explanation, explanation you always include electron pairs repel. Lone pairs repel more than bonded pairs. Always put those two statements in. So electron pairs repel, lone pairs repel more than bonded pairs to get as far apart as they can from each other. Ammonia has got three bonding pairs and one lone pair of electrons. So key things to always include in your answer. You know, it's three marks, obviously one mark for your shape and then another couple for your explanation. So moving on, uh, ammonium reacts with hydrogen chloride to form ammonium chloride and they give me the formula for that. Complete the electronic configuration of the chloride ion. Okay, so they wanted the chloride ion. So chloride is going to have an extra electron, isn't it? So it's going to be 2s2 and 2p6. Uh, and then I've got 3s2, 3p6. Remember, if it was a chlorine atom, it would be 3p5 if it's a chloride ion. Draw the dot and cross diagram um, of the NH4 plus ion. Okie dokie. So, you've just drawn ammonia. Like so. So this is quite nice because you've already done the, the hard work. And then along comes an H plus, sits on it, like so. Plus charge overall, and that there is your that there is your dated covalent bond. There. So make sure that those electrons are the same. State the shape and bond angle in an NH4 plus ion. So the shape now is going to be tetrahedral, bond angle 109.5 degrees. A student investigate, why is that why my bond angle's got larger? Because I've now only got bonded pairs, haven't I? I've lost my lone pair. A student investigates the conductivity of ammonium chloride. He noticed when it was solid it didn't conduct electricity, but when it dissolved in water it did. Explain. First thing, have they talked about it melting at all? Not talked about it melting, so don't include anything about the fact that ionic things um, conduct electricity when they are molten. Not interested in that. Um, in this question, they want it when it's still in water. So it won't conduct electricity when it's solid because the ions cannot move. It can conduct electricity when it's dissolved in water because the ions are now free to move, so it can carry a current. The key thing is ions that are doing the conductivity. Do not talk about electrons at all. Electrons you only talk about in metallic bonding, not for this. So that's for two marks. Ions can't move when it's a solid end fixed position, but they can do when they are dissolved in water. Right, ammonium compounds such as ammonium sulfate can be used as fertilizers. Write a balanced equation to show how ammonium sulfate could be formed by aqueous ammonia and sulfuric acid. So, you've got aqueous ammonia. I think some people decide to use ammonium hydroxide. That's okay. Plus sulfuric acid, so you need to know your formula for sulfuric acid. That's gonna to go to ammonium sulfate. 
What's going to be the, oh, they told me what the ammonium sulfate is, activity. And I need to balance it by just having two of those guys, like so. What is meant by the term salt? Uh, well, a salt is a compound that we form from an acid and we replace the H plus with a metal ion or ammonium. So that's a definition that you can learn, that's okay. Uh, why is ammonia acting as a base? A base is a proton acceptor. It is accepting a proton. That's why it's acting as a base. And what is the relative formula mass of ammonium sulfate? Well, you just need to get your calculators out and add it all up. So you've got, uh, there are two nitrogens, eight hydrogens, a sulfur, and four oxygens. And they come to, do, 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 132.1. Uh, a student used the internet to research chlorine and some of its compounds. He discovered that seawater contains chloride ions. Clever chap. And he, so he added aqueous silver nitrate to a sample of seawater. What would he see? Chloride ions, silver nitrate. He's going to see a white precipitate. Yeah. So he'd see a white. Write an ionic equation. So this is why I say just learn those three that you need. Your ionic equation, including state symbols, Ag plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous goes to Ag Cl solid. You know, just learn what's dead easy to learn, isn't it? And then you just replace this for that. After carrying out the test, he added dilute aqueous ammonia. What would he see? He would see the white precipitate dissolve. So the white precipitate would dissolve. The student also discovered that chlorine is used in large scale treatment of water. One benefit of adding chlorine to water. One benefit, of course, we know is it kills the bacteria, so it makes the water safe to drink. Not everyone agrees that we should do this. So just one possible hazard. Um, I know we talked about chlorine is toxic. Uh, so one harmful effect is that chlorine is toxic, um, and it also forms chlorinated hydrocarbons. The chemical chlorine is hydrocarbons, which are, uh, may cause cancer. Right, we've now got a nice equation. They've given us this. They won't always give this to you, so you do need to learn this. So I will. They won't give it to you. So oxidation of chlorine, Cl2 is an element, so it's zero. HCl is going to be minus one, and this one we know is plus one. It's a disproportionation reaction. Use the oxidation numbers to explain why. Um, it's because chlorine has been both oxidized and reduced. So, Cl has been oxidized from zero in Cl2 to plus one in HClO. And then you also said chlorine has been reduced from zero in CO2 to minus one in HCl. I know you already stated them up there, but do a double whammy. And therefore, therefore, chlorine has been both oxidized and reduced. Just to spell it out for them. You know, it is two marks, so you might as well just make sure you get both.